So today I wanted to have a look at loading some data using the streaming data loader that is currently under development. Um, I'm going to be loading some data from Apache Kafka. It's going to be data that's in JSON format and uh, I'm going to do it all through the point and click GUI. I'm going to go here to the load data screen and I'm going to pick Apache Kafka. Uh, now I need to specify where my servers are, which I already have in the copy buffer. Uh, it automatically fills that into the consumer properties where I could also add any kind of TLS settings or uh, other consumer properties I might have, kind of free, free for all. Um, and I'm going to also add my topic, which is wiki ticker. Now I have the option of querying from the start of the stream or the end of the stream. Uh, basically take the earliest offset possible and kind of grab some data from there or just wait for new data to come in. Uh, usually I would want to query from the start of the stream. I guess the only exception to that would be if uh, maybe there's some garbage data at the start of the stream and I want to kind of ignore it and only look at the schema of the, of the later data. I'm going to preview this. And it's going to connect to, uh, to the Kafka. It's going to sample stuff. And now it will actually cache it inside the coordinator. So I have some, uh, I, I'm seeing my raw data here. This is just the raw data. Looks like the right topic, looks like JSON. Uh, and it uh, looks like it's like about two days old because it's the start of the stream and there's probably a two day retention. So let's click next. Um, because the data was shaped like JSON, uh, it automatically guessed the parser to be JSON. Obviously, I could have picked a different parser here uh, or typed in my own. So I could like type in a regex parser. Obviously, this is going to be nonsense, but uh, let's do um, let's something just um, demonstrating that I can kind of enter whatever parser I want. So I, if this was some uh, custom text data that I could parse using a reg regular expression. I could do that. In this case, it's much simpler. I can actually use the JSON. And one of the cool things about the JSON parser is that I can actually specify a flattening of columns if the JSON was nested. In this case, the JSON is pretty flat. Well, it's completely flat, so uh, there's nothing really for me to specify. I'm going to move over and start looking at parsing the time. Uh, again, uh, using some clever regular expressions, the GUI has detected that timestamp is the column that I want to use as my primary time dimension. Uh, I'm obviously free to configure it however I want or uh, say there is no primary time dimension, just use a constant value. In this case, I'm going to stick with the default and just use timestamp as the, um, the primary time dimension. And I should note that what, as I'm going through this flow, uh, it's constantly filling in this uh, ingestion spec for me. And if at any point I want to do something that for some reason isn't supported in the UI, I could just go in here and uh, play around with it. But let's get back to, to the flow. So next I'll configure some transforms. Now this is the point where I could enter pretty arbitrary uh, dimension transformations. I could maybe um, add a column to a different column or uh, do something like that. Uh, I'm not going to do it right now. This I'll save that for a different video. Uh, similarly, I could apply a filter here um, and I'm going to skip that part as well, but I could filter some data out, uh, especially if I transformed it before. Again, I'll at some point want to make a video that's like a fully loaded video of uh, exploring really all the functionality that's available. Um, this is the important part. Uh, I want to configure my schema. I want to see, okay, like what dimensions and what metrics will I actually have? And the cool thing about this, this code and how this data loader works is that uh, what you see here is actually what you will get in Druid. Uh, it, it's actually parsing, uh, it's, it's actually configuring these, um, uh, these dimensions and measures exactly as they will be and it's running it through the same code. So uh, one of the very important things in Druid is that you can have rollup. Rollup is basically where you define um, some dimensions and you say, hey, Druid, pre-group them for me and then aggregate them using these metrics. Uh, and this can greatly increase the, uh, 
the, the speed of the computation because it decreases the number of rows in the database. Uh, Rollup is a pretty tricky concept to get until you wrap your head around it. And uh, this is actually a nice demonstration of what Rollup is all about. Uh, I have a bunch of uh, events here. Uh, I'm obviously each and every event happens in its own kind of like unique point in time almost. Uh, so I truncate the time here so that uh, I have a bunch of events happening kind of in the same time bucket. I truncate it to the hour. Obviously, I can configure it to anything I want. Um, but I'm not getting any rollup. Every event is just receiving a count of one, so nothing is being grouped together. Uh, and that is because one of these uh, things I just know from the data is uh, the diff URL. Uh, every, every event has a unique diff URL, so this is essentially a unique identifier. I'm going to go ahead and remove it because I don't need it in my data. It's not actually offering any analytical insights to me, uh, but it is blocking me from having rollup. So now that, now that I deleted that, I still see that I'm not getting any rollup here. And in this case, uh, I should actually be getting rollup, but this is, the, Wikipedia doesn't get that many edits. And obviously, you know, a lot of pages are being edited all the time. So uh, the page is actually a new kind of makes these events pretty unique. I'll get some rollup eventually. I just don't get any in my sample right here. But I'm going to remove this page dimension just to make the, the rollup population very clear. Now that I've removed it, I can scroll over here and I'm see, I can see that on some events, I'm really getting a lot of rollup. Uh, this uh, ASMR bot has made 42 edits and all of them can be rolled into one nice little row. So that's 42 rows that become one. Uh, and like, you can't beat that. Uh, you can't beat that for uh, efficiency. So at this point, I could also add my own, uh, like a different metric. So, you know, by default, it created certain metrics, uh, but I'm going to stick with what, 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 what I have right here. Uh, next, I can partition. Uh, so I'm going to define how Droid will partition this data into segments. And there's two levels of partitioning in Droid. The first one is always by time, which is what you get on this column right here. So this is saying uniformly split up the data by hour. Uh, I, so basically create segments that are all one hour long. Uh, and in case of something like a streaming data source like Kafka, this is more than just how big the segments are. This is also how long uh, tasks will run for and collect all this data before they actually hand it off. Uh, and the secondary partitioning is, you know, if for a given hour a row, uh, segment gets too large, we can split it up into multiple segments. I'm going to leave these defaults as they are. Next, I can tune some stuff. So I can tune how, um, uh, how my data will become be processed. And I can say, well, for the input, I actually want to start reading from the, from the very start of the stream. Uh, previously, I specified that for the sample, but now I want to actually say, OK, you know, use the earliest offset, read as much data as there is in this Kafka topic. Um, and I can specify how long tasks run for uh, and uh, uh, like the, the different configurations here. Uh, this is everything that is exposed in the, uh, the IO config of Druid. And any kind of, uh, you know, if I change this to 101, uh, this all reflects here in the stack uh, in real time. Uh, and similarly, I have some general tuning configs. This is more about memory management and other things. Uh, Again, uh, there's some inline documentation here, and I'm going to keep everything uh, on default. And I'm going to go to the next step, which is all about what am I going to get? Well, uh, let's name this data source. So I'm going to do wiki ticker uh, video demo. And um, since this data source doesn't exist already, this property doesn't matter. But uh, here I could specify whether I want to append to an existing data source or override it. Uh, and lastly, I can configure how do I want to get my uh, parse exceptions, uh, if I have any. And in this case, I'm going to say, well, you know what, I'm, I don't care about the exceptions. I'm going to just go to the next step. And here I have my kind of fully loaded config that I'm ready to submit. Uh, if I have any changes that I want to make, I can make them here. I can go back and see that reflected in the UI. Uh, or at least that's the hope. And um, it looks all good, so let's submit it. 
So it says, supervisor submitted it successfully. Going to task view. So it takes me to the task view. I already have a few supervisors here. I have a wiki ticker supervisor running already. It's actually the same topic. Uh, I have a Kinesis supervisor that I've been testing out. And here is my new supervisor with the wiki ticker video demo. Uh, and if I refresh here, I see that I now have a wiki ticker video demo task running. And this task, uh, it's actually gonna start um, doing stuff and it's uh, there we go it's initializing so um, I can go to my data sources and uh, I have some data sources here and I see that um, there is no data published yet for uh, for the data source I just created I think it just started up but if I refresh here now I see that I have this wiki, wiki, wiki ticker video demo while I was talking. I got uh, 55 events in, so it's uh, starting to process the data. And if I leave it overnight or uh, even just for a couple of minutes, it will really catch up and uh, uh, receive a lot more information. So I can click here, go to query with SQL, uh, and it just gives me a basic SQL query that I can run. And I'm gonna run it, and I see that this data is actually coming in. So that was really smooth and pleasant. And uh, now if I wanted to, I could uh, maybe iterate on this config or uh, maybe wait for this data to, to fill in. But the point is the data is there and it can, I can start playing with it. Thank you for watching. I'll make a, another video explaining the transforms, the flattens, and look into ingesting some batch data in the future. But uh, uh, very excited to have this Kafka loading uh, sorted out. Thank you.